on Resurrection Sundays, I always uh, look through, through Scripture and think through Scripture just as it relates to what do we minister on Resurrection Sunday. It's so much about the resurrection. It's so, the resurrection is so rich, and we can go from so many different angles as we minister about the resurrection. Do we talk about the crucifixion? Do we talk about the last seven words that he said, the seven statements that he mentioned? Do we talk about the journey in going to the cross? Do we talk about the, the, the two thieves that was on the cross? I mean, where do, where, where do we go? Where do we go? Do we talk about Thomas and how Thomas didn't believe? And he said, unless I see the nail print in his hand and in his side and I'm able to stick my hand through, I won't believe. What do we talk? Do we talk about the denial and Peter denied him three times? Do we talk about Judas? Do we talk about the Last Supper? What do we talk about? I mean, it's so, it's, it's so rich. Do we talk about Palm Sunday and how everybody was, was singing Laquita, uh, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, early in the week, but later in the week, the same ones are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, saying, crucify him, crucify him. So you got to be, you got to be watchful. They'll be saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, then crucify him. So, so where do we go with it? And because the resurrection, y'all, that, that's, that's where it is. That's where it is. It's the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. He died on the cross for our sins, but not only did he die, he rose again. See, a lot of religions, they, 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 they talk about Jesus and they say that he was a good man. And don't get caught up in that he was a good man and he was a prophet. No, no, no. What do you believe about him? That's what he said to the disciples. He asked the question. He said, who do people say I am? And they said, well, some say you Elijah. Some say you the prophet. Some say you Jeremiah. He said, but who do you say I am? What's important is who do you say I am? That's the question. That's who do you say that he is? And Peter said, you, you, you the son of the living God. And, and, and Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But you got that from the Father. You, 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 you know what? We have to know who he is. So the foundation of our faith is the resurrection. The crucifixion was amazing. But the foundation of what we believe as believers is the resurrection. It's, it's what this day is about, the resurrection. Every other religion was founded by men and prophets whose end was the grave. Joseph Smith, end was the grave. Uh, 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 every, every, every founder of any religion, the end was the grave. A except, except Christianity. Except Christianity. His end was not the grave because the tomb is empty. Look at somebody and say the tomb is empty. No other religious figure in history has ever prophesied his own death and resurrection and accomplished it. You can, you can prophesy your death, and some folks have done that, but he prophesied his death and his resurrection, and he accomplished what he prophesied. He told them what was going to happen. You're going to tear this temple down in three days. It's going to be rebuilt. He pro and it happened. Many people were crucified for crimes like insulting Caesar. And so, so the fact that Jesus' crucifixion and burial are not necessarily, they outstanding, but it ain't, it's not the, the foundation of what we believe. Because many people suffered that same fate. Many people were, were crucified for insulting Caesar at that time. However, the bodies of those people are still in the grave, but Jesus' tomb is empty. So, so it's great that he was crucified and he died on the cross for our sin. He took all of our sins and he had forgiven our debt. The things that we've done, the things that we will do, he's forgiven them. He's, ta he's taken it to the cross. He died for that. That's very significant. But what's really powerful and what hadn't been repeated is that he, he died and he rose. And now he's in heaven on the right hand of the Father. John 20, 8 and 9. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Jesus told them that he had to rise, but, but they didn't understand from Scripture. And so they, they didn't know when they saw him that Sunday morning that he had to rise from the dead. Because he rose is something important that we have to understand. Because he did something when he rose. The power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost allowed him to rise from the dead. 
The same power that raised him from the dead is the same power that will quicken our spirits when we leave here if we're believers. This, this, this and I talked a little bit about this on last year, but when they went to the grave, the first people to show up at the grave was Mary Magdalene and two other Marys. And I get so excited when I read that because Mary Magdalene was a woman who had seven demons in her and Jesus cast out the seven demons in her. And she loved him so much that she went to the grave. She early Sunday morning, I got to see. I got to see my Lord and say, I, I want to know what's going on. She had seven devils in her and Jesus cast the seven devils out of her and she followed Jesus. You got to be like Mary Magdalene. And some of y'all done had demons in y'all. Some of y'all done been out there. You done been wild. And you done been buck wild. And he done cast this stuff out of you. You got to follow him and be hungry and desperate and thirsty for him with everything that's in you. Man. He said, he who is forgiven much loveth much. If you know that he's forgiven you for a lot of stuff, you got to love him. You can't be wild and ratchet out there and you get in the house of God and there's just a, a praise the Lord. No, praise the Lord. I ain't going to let nobody stop my praise. I was bucked out there and I'm in here and I'm, praise the Lord. No, I'm, I'm excited about what God has done. You don't know like I know what he's done for me, where he's brought me from, what he brought me out of. Yeah. So, so it's, it's the resurrection. It's time to rise. Rise. Rise means move from a lower position to a higher one. Come or go up. Move from a lower position to a higher one. An instance of becoming higher. So, so when he died, he moved from a higher position to a lower one in the grave, and then he rose from the grave. So he moved from a lower position to a higher position. He went to be with the Father, a lower position to a higher position. That's what rise is. And, and, and I think about this, I think about this because when we leave here, y'all, we have to go somewhere. So when, when we leave here, so, and I think about this, this is how I think. 700 years ago when people passed away, they, they, they had to go somewhere. And so 20 years ago when people passed away, they had to go somewhere. Seven years, three years, last year, those people, are, they, something had to happen. They had to go somewhere. And we can't believe the, the lie that everybody that leave here is in heaven with the Lord. All right? So, so because you get t-shirts and say, rest in peace, little, 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 little Charlie. And little Charlie was bucking the system, never made Jesus Christ his Lord and Savior, out there robbing, stealing, cussing, and he died in his sin. And, and, and we sorry for little Charlie. We sorry for his family. We love his family. We embrace his family. But we can't send little Charlie to heaven because little Charlie didn't. And, that, and, that, and that's hard. That's why we have a work to do. That's why we, have, we, we, we do it with a sense of urgency because there's too many people that's out here that don't know him and we can't sit on the bench and not tell people about Jesus because when they leave here, I'm not going to get at the funeral. We're not going to have ministers that's going to be at the funeral that's going to tell them that they're going to heaven. We don't talk about that. Who you live for in this lifetime is who you live with when you leave here. That's a hard, why are you talking about that resurrection Sunday? Like, that's a hard truth that who you live for. So in other words, if you live for Satan, you don't go and be with Jesus when you leave here. If you live for Jesus, you don't go and be with Satan. If you live for Satan here, you're going to live with him when you leave here. He come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If you live for Jesus, you're going to live eternity with him. Y'all, that's the bottom line. So we, we, we don't live for the moment. Some of us, we live for the moment. It's people that have passed. And people who did it their own way, people who did it and who didn't follow God, and they say these things at their funeral where, you know, he did it his way. <laughs> See, if I did it my way, I, I, don't, I don't do it my way. I can't do it my way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he should direct your path. So I have to trust in God. I can't do it my way. I do it his way because he's my Lord, because he's my Savior. And who you live for is who you live with. So who you living for? Look at somebody next to you and say, who you living for? If they didn't say it back. I ain't even hear what he said. What you mean? I just... 
I will say, let's say it again. Let's say, man, I'm finna leave this church. I'm finna go. <laughs> who, you, who, who, you, who, you, who you living for? So, so Paul, Paul talks about the resurrection because it's important. The re- he was talking to the church of Corinth about the resurrection and the importance of the resurrection. And if the resurrection didn't happen, then we, 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 just, we just in here having a, a, a motivational speaking session and y'all listening. All right? If the resurrection did not happen, I'm just motivating y'all to live better. If the resurrection did not happen, I'm just like, go, you can do it. Self-help, go, run, you can do it, run, Forrest. That's what we're doing. It's just motivating. I, I coach the kids in football, and I said, man, I'm going to tell you, it's about Christ here. Now, we're going to win as, as you learn about Christ, but it's about knowing Christ because it's not just about this game. It's about you knowing Jesus. You can, you can find out about the game at the community center. You can play for them. But, but when you're up under this leadership, you're going to know about Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. That's my, that's my motivation. That's my motivation. So, so the resurrection. Look at somebody and say the resurrection. It's the resurrection. The resurrection. The enemy had a mission statement, and Jesus, had a, Jesus has a mission statement. And they're both in the same scripture. John 10 and 10. 10. John 10 and 10 said, the thief... Comes not but to what? To steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mission. Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly or have it to the full. So in other words, I didn't just give you life to just just live. I came to give you life more abundantly. I gave you, I'm coming to give you life and life more abundantly. So I want to give you life here and life in the afterlife. It ain't just about this place. It's about where you go once you leave this place. It's eternity. Don't allow temporary moments to cause you to forfeit the future that God has for you. Because you can't get over this temporary loneliness, this temporary brokenness, this temporary horniness, this temporary uh, 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 envy, this temporary anger. And so you allow a temporary moment to cause you to forfeit the future that God has for you because of this moment that you're in. Because whatever moment you're in, you have to understand that this too. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going from verse 12 through 23. Paul addresses the resurrection and the importance of the resurrection as believers. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. So if, and it's it's historically proven that he's been risen from the grave. But but, But Paul said, listen, listen, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. You got faith in nothing. It don't even matter if you got faith in the Lord, if he didn't rise from the dead. So it don't, it don't even matter. So some people believe, and we ain't buying that. Well, you know, he's a prophet. He's a, we, we, we fool with you. You don't fool with him. Either he's Lord and Savior or he's nothing. Jesus, Jesus made claims to be God. He made claims. So either he's, either he's God or he's a liar. So he can't be a good man, but he's making claims to be one with the Father. Me and the Father are one. John, I mean, John, in the beginning was the Word, Angela. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. In verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word, Jesus. The Word was with God, Jesus. The Word was God, Jesus. And the Word became flesh in verse 14 and dwelled among us. Oh, God. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. The dead, so he's making a, a, a case of, the, y'all, the dead is going to be raised. So people that leave, they're going to they be raised again. This is not the end. 
Read. For it... For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. So it, it was people during that time when, when he had risen from the dead, they, 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 they paid the soldiers to say that, his, that the disciples came throughout the night to take his body. Because they knew that if, if, if this comes to pass and y'all can testify that he really rose from the dead, then we in trouble. So you talking about a missing man report. They still trying to find him. You ain't going to find him unless you get to heaven because he in heaven. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. If he hadn't been raised, then your faith is weak, your faith is nothing, and you're still in your sins. If he hadn't been raised, we just here having a good time, and y'all just, I'm just going to go to church just because. No, no, we ain't going just because. We ain't going just because it's Resurrection Sunday, and that's what you're supposed to do. We're going because, y'all, there's a risen Savior that's for real, and he died on the cross for our sin, and he wants a relationship with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Not that I, I got saved when I was five years old, and I got baptized when I was five years old, but I grew up and I lived however I wanted to live, but I say that I'm saved. And then at your funeral, they said, well, you, you're 29 now, but at your, you live however you want to live. You got four kids out of wedlock. You ain't living. You smoking, doing whatever it is that you want to do. And on, on your obituary, they say you got saved at a young age. I ain't talking about that. Come on, son. That's tough. That's tough. But it's true. Yes, say, do, do you know him? Is he your Lord and Savior? If you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. If you love me, you're going to obey me. Jesus. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. He said, look, that mean the folks that went before you, that mean Peter, James, John, all the folks that went before you, if Christ hadn't been risen from the dead, those that died before you, they even lost too. So, so this is the foundation. We got to get this part right. We can disagree on tongues and we can disagree on, on Baptist and Church of God in Christ and Presbyterian. And uh, we can disagree on all this stuff. That's the, that, that, those are non-essentials. But this is essential. Do you or do you not believe the resurrection? That's essential. All right. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. <laughs> if only in this life we have hope in Christ. If Christ, if he's real, but only we have hope in this life and that's no life after this, we all people to be pitied. Like, oh, you, because we have nothing. He got you through a season. He got you through a tough time. He got you and you live 110 years old and, and, and then you leave we, we, to nothing. Yeah, you, you, uh, when you look at the, the sky and you look at the stars and look at the trees and just look at yourself, yeah, you got to understand that it's something bigger than you. It's something bigger than you. It's something bigger. You ain't just here and talking and running and, and speaking and living and, and breathing and, and you got the activities of your limbs and, and God and God don't even exist. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all, we of we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed. He said, let, 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 me, let, let, let me squash it out. Let me go on, be clear. <laughs> but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Yes, indeed, indeed. Let me, let, let, let's get that clear. I said all that there, but let me, let me be clear. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. The first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Yeah. So he went first. He was raised first. Oh. It's other people that died, but they didn't rise. He died and he rose again. Lazarus died and Jesus brought him back to life. But Lazarus died again and was in the grave. When Jesus died, he went to beat my God. He went to heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. For since death came through a man. Who was that man? Adam. Come on, saints. The resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Who is that man? Y'all got it going on. So Adam is Adam. Because of Adam, sin came into the earth. Because of Jesus, we able to be free from sin. So Adam is the first Adam, and Jesus is considered what? The second, the second Adam. So the second Adam is Jesus. So because of one man's sin, many were made sinners. But because of one man's righteousness, many were made righteous. Oh 
So because of his, he took our sins. All the stuff, all the twerking, all the lying, all the stealing, all the smoking. He took all of it to the cross and nailed it to the cross and died for our sin. So we don't have to live in shame. We don't have to live paranoid because he died for our sins. When we accept him as Lord and Savior, we can receive his forgiveness. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Hallelujah. That's some good news. That's some good news. That's some good news. Let's go. But each in turn, Christ the first fruit, then when he comes, those who belong to him. My God, my God. Thank you, thank you. Now, now, now this is so important because he said in the rapture, it's going to be two people that's going to be grinding in, in the field. And one going to be taken, and the other one still going to be left in the field. So if you're in the field, and you're doing some work in the field, or if you're at work, and then you look up, and, and some of your coworkers gone, and they didn't walk out the door, they just disappeared, then you know that you're in a lot of trouble. It said, it, Nick, it said two folks going to be laying in the bed, and one going to be gone, and the other going to still be laying in the bed. If you the one still laying in the bed, you're in a lot of trouble. I told Tori the first every girl, you better get your best. Make sure you're straight, girl. <laughs> look, Tori, look, look, she be like, I, I have to check to make sure I'm good. She go in the other room, I'm like, Tori, <laughs> make sure she ain't disappeared and then went to heaven. <laughs> I was just in the kitchen, but say something. Make some noise or something. But you got to make sure yourself together. You better make sure you're in order, your house in order. So the thief comes not but to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Nick, Jesus come that I may what? Have life and life more abundantly or life to the full. So in other words, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives in us. So he gave the great commission in Matthew chapter 28. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey all things that I've commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always to the very end of the earth. So he gave them the great commission, not the great suggestion. So as believers, that's for all of us, that we have to go and make disciples. So when we talk about go day, that ain't just, uh, I don't feel like it. We, that's what we call to do. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, the same power that raised him from the dead lives in us. Acts 1 and 8, and you shall receive what? Power. After what? The Holy Ghost has come up on you. And you should be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So, Jesus ascended back to heaven. And he made himself known for, for 40 days on the earth. And he went back to heaven. And on the 50th day, which is the day of Pentecost, he sent the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost fell upon the people. And they were saved. The first appearance of when Peter and them preached after the, the receiving of the Holy Ghost, 3,000 people got saved. 3,000 people got saved. They're excited about the Lord. So the power of God raised Jesus from the dead. The power of God, the same power, fell on Peter and the disciples. The same power that fell on them is the same power that lives in us as believers. So we got power. We have dunamis power. We have dynamite power. And now look at what's getting ready to take place because now these disciples on fire for the Lord. Peter and John on fire. They preaching the gospel. They're on fire for the Lord. And some getting ready to happen. Look at Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. Look at somebody say, today is your day. Today is your day. What if God tell you that today is your day? I'm getting ready to blow your mind. I'm getting ready to blow your mind. I, you weren't even expecting me to do it. I'm getting ready to blow your mind. I'm getting ready to bring you out. I'm getting ready to deliver you. I'm getting ready to pour out a blessing on you that you ain't got room enough to receive. I am getting ready to blow your mind. You came for one thing, but you're going to leave with something totally different than what you expected. That's the kind of God that we serve. He'll blow your mind. You come for one thing, but God will give you something totally different. You come for something that you want, but he'll give you what you need. That's the kind of God that we serve. You thought that this all you wanted, but this is what you need. I'm getting ready to regulate some stuff in your life and put you in position and do some things for you. 
So you already got eternal life for when you leave here, but I'm going to give you a life while you're here, an abundant life while you praise the Lord. I'm going to give you a life more abundantly while you're here. You can't have it all, Effie. I ain't Effie. And who said I can't have it all? Who said I can't have life everlasting and an abundant life here? All right, come on, let's, let's, let's read. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. So they, a, went, they went to the temple to pray at the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. So Ooh. this this man was lame from his mother's womb. The Bible didn't even give him a name. We know Peter and we know John and we know this lame man who was brought to the pool, this to, to, to the temple. And this temple, he was at a gate called Beautiful. There was a gate. The gate was significant, and it, it was called Beautiful. And this man was lame, meaning he could not walk from his mother's womb. It didn't mean that he lost his ability to walk when he was 20. He was lame from his mother's womb, so he was never taught how to walk. He never was taught. He never saw, he never played kickball. He never played baseball or football. He never did those things because he didn't have, he could not walk. He was lame. So he was carried on a mat by his, his affiliates and brought to a temple to ask for money every day. And in this custom, it was customary for the Jews to, to, to give those who was lame or those who couldn't, who couldn't walk or those who was disabled resources. So he knew that these were people of God that's going to the temple. So maybe I can play up on their heart and stand outside of the temple to receive alms, to receive some gifts from them. Read. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for an alms. He saw him and he asked for some money. Can, 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 I, can, can I get some? Can, 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 I, can, I can I get some? Can I get a couple of dollars? Can I get some silver? Can I get some gold? You know, I'm here, man. I'm, I'm lame. Let me, can I get some stuff is what he said. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Put your head... Pick your head up and look on us. Maybe he was a self-sabotager because he had lost so much. Maybe he didn't have an expectation. Because in his life, he, 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 he was lame. For all these years, I mean, that was his life. And, and he couldn't do things on his own. He had to get people to help him to do whatever he wanted to do. And so maybe he didn't have any hope for anything better. Maybe he didn't have a desire for anything better. Sometime in life, when, when life, and so you use this term life, when life gets to life in and things get to happen in your life and you take so many, many losses, you don't really have hope for anything better. So you just accept the fact that you're going to be here. You accept the fact that your marriage is going to be no better than what it is. You accept the fact that your health is going to be no better than what it is. You, expect, you accept the fact that your finance is going to be no better than what it is. And you tell people, oh, yeah, girl, I got it going. I'm too blessed to be stressed. But when you go and really deal with yourself and sit in yourself, you look at where you've come from and you look at your track record. And sometimes you say, I don't... <laughs> It's just, it ain't going to get any better for me. So you look like, you look like a, a beacon of confidence when you walk and show up in places, when you go to work and people think you got it going on. But underneath, there's something oftentimes in you that's holding you back and you don't have the confidence. You look like it, you speak like it, you dress like it, but sometimes on the inside, you don't have that confidence because of the L's and the defeats that you've taken in your life. And maybe he was a self-sabotager and he took so many L's in his life that he didn't have an expectation that God was going to do something in his life. He only had an expectation just to give me what I'm used to. I'm used to the crumbs. I'm used to some food. I'm used to a couple of dollars. Just give me that. I didn't even ask God to heal. He didn't even ask God to heal. He, didn't ask, he, he, he came to the temple, but he didn't even have an expectation of being healed. Sometimes when you take L's, you don't even have an expectation for victories anymore. Because you're so used to the L's. Because hope deferred make the heart sick. Because you've been hoping so much and wanting so much and it hadn't happened. So you just gave up all hope pertaining to a certain thing. And so you just did it with that thing mentally. Like, man, ain't no, ain't no sense in me keep praying about it. Because I keep praying about it and God not doing it. I'm going to keep getting frustrated. So let me just even stop praying about this thing altogether. And if he do, he do. If he don't, he don't. But let me just let this be my expectation. 
Maybe, maybe that's where he, where, where he was, Andrew. Because it just doors just shutting. He ain't even looking for a door anymore. From birth, from, from birth, that was his plight in life. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. I want some. I want something. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He said, he said, told me, I look at me, pick your head up and look at me. He said, now you're asking for some, some money, for some change, or whatever it is you're asking for. He said, but silver and gold have I none. But what I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus. So the same power, in other words, that raised Jesus from the dead is the same authority that I'm speaking through when I tell you to rise up and walk. I'm getting ready to do something. I told you today is your day. I told you that I'm getting ready to, to, to send a blessing in your life. I told you today is your day. Rise up and walk. Because Jesus rose, this man was going to be able to rise. Because he, had Jesus never rose, had he never risen, he would, this man wouldn't be able to rise. So he said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give thee, all I got is this. You came for some crumbs. You came for some silver and gold. If I gave you the silver and gold, you'll still be lame. If I gave you the silver and gold, you'll still be in that position. But I'm not, so, so I'm, I'm going to give you something better than silver and gold. I'm going to give you a healing. I'm going to give you a breakthrough. I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you need. Rise and walk. And it, come on. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Come on, sit back down, friend. Pick up your head, friend. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Because they had to call him the Jesus of Nazareth because there was many Jesus during that time. So I'm going to let you know now it's Jesus, bar Jesus, all this. No, no, it's in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. So he picked him up. Look, he, he, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Because before, friend, he wasn't able to walk. He was lame. But when he was picked up, my God. He didn't get strength in his ankles and strength in his, in his legs until he stood up. He had to take a step and stand up. A step of faith and stand up. And when he stepped up, my God, he received my God. My, immediately his feet, my God, my God. I, I, this is good right here. I didn't even see that. The first. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet, not, not, not later on, but immediately his feet, my God, and ankle bones received strength. Where his feet and ankle bones didn't have any strength. When he stood up, God my, miraculously did something, immediately did something in his feet and his ankle bones, and he received strength. He could have been saying, well, well God, I ain't, you, you want me to walk? How you want me to walk, God? I ain't never walked before a day in my life, God. How you want me to really do this, God? He didn't ask any questions. He didn't say anything about the how. He just said, God, if you telling me that it's my day to rise, I'm going to rise. I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk. When God tell you that it's your day to rise, people of God, when God said that now is your day to rise, you better say, God, here I am. I'm all here for God. When you say that I'm going to rise above my circumstances, I'm going to rise above my situation, I'm going to rise above my anxiety, I'm going to rise above my depression, I'm going to rise above this divorce, I'm going to rise above this defeat. I'm going to rise above this pain. I'm going to rise above this disease. I'm going to rise above this illness. I'm going to rise above everything that's been coming against me. You better step up and say, I'm going to rise and be what God has called me to be. Stand up and rise. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, not the next day, not later in the week, but he, but immediately, his feet and ankle bones strengthened. Come on, somebody shake your feet. My God, he, his, his feet 
and his anchor bones strengthened immediately. God was getting ready to do something. If today was your day was a person, my God, today was his day. He came to get alms. He came to get gifts. He came to get my, some of you came for the children. You came because somebody invited you. You came just because it was Resurrection Sunday. But my God, you came for something that you want. But God said, I'm going to give you something that you need. I'm going to give you a message to tell you to rise. It's time to rise. It's time to rise. And you can have confidence in the fact that if, if God raised Jesus from the dead, the same power he endowed the disciples with, the same power, my God, he, the same power that was in them, the same power that was moving in their life, the same power that saved souls, the same power that 3,000 people got saved, the same power that 5,000 people got saved after that, the same power that healed the sick, that raised the dead, that allowed the blind to receive their sight, the same power will strengthen you and cause you to rise because he rose. The power that raised him is the power that will allow you to rise above anything that come your way. No weapon formed that gets you shall prosper. You're going to rise above my God. Anything that come against you. They was preaching the gospel because they locked them up for preaching the gospel. And they set them in jail. We're going to lock you up because you're preaching in the name of Jesus. And they said, look, we're we going to keep on preaching. They encouraged them not to preach in the name of Jesus. And they said, who shall we obey? God or man? We ain't stud man. We're going to obey God. So you can say whatever you want to say. We're going to preach in the name of Jesus. He said, no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But at the name of Jesus, my God, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So they begin to say that in, in, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. There be no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. They preached the word of God. The Bible let us know that 5,000 people ended up getting saved. They got out of jail. And when they got out of jail, something happened. They got out of jail because the men were still looking amazed because, man, we can't, we can't do none of these people. But look at this here. Look at, look at chapter 4, verse 21 through 22. Okay, here we go. So when they had further threatened them, y'all some haters for real. These people preaching in the name of Jesus, you trying to whoop them. So you think you got some haters because somebody said something to you on Facebook and talked about you, and you think you got some real haters. You ain't got no haters to folks persecuting you because of Jesus Christ. Them people really persecuting them and beating them and throwing them in prison because they preaching in the name of Jesus. So when they, uh -uh, go, go. So when they, so when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Finding nothing, finding nothing how they might punish them. Because of, the, because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. Everybody started praising God because they saw this man that was lame. Everybody started rejoicing because this lame man that, did, that could not walk. He was over 40 years of age. So it ain't like he was 17 and then he was able to walk. He was not able to walk for over 40 years. And for over 40 years, he's sitting at the gate. Over 40 years, day after day, they taking him to the gate. Day after day, Rochelle, they putting him on a mat and taking him to a gate. That he got his partners, his homies, his family, his friends, who's getting him on a mat and taking him to a gate. And he's looking for a handout. He's looking for something because he can't work, because he's just sitting there asking for resources. Because there's something that he won't. And look at what happened. He went to the temple, wanting to leave with some silver and some gold. But he went to the temple one way and came out a totally different way. He went to the temple looking for silver and gold, but he came out of the temple, my God, walking, praising, and rejoicing because God had given him something that he need rather than something that he won't. God will give you what you need rather than what you won't. You got to praise God for, say, for seeing your need and say, I'm going to meet your need. I'm going to give you what you need, my God, my God. I remember one day I went into jail as a sinner. I wanted God to let me free. Had God let me free, I just would have been a sinner, my God, that wasn't in jail. I would have been free physically, but still bound spiritually. I went in jail a sinner, but I came out as a saint of God. 
He didn't just give me what I wanted. He gave me what I needed. I went in and asking him, bring me out of jail. Now, now I'm not just going to bring you out of jail. I'm going to bring you and bring you out of the pits of hell. My God, I'm going to give you a hope. I'm going to give you a... I'm going to give you life, and I'm going to give you life more abundantly. You better understand something, that you may be here for another reason, but God will give you what you need. He'll give you what you need, like he gave the man what he need, the man praising and rejoicing. Can you imagine how he went home that day? Because he was probably a man of faith, I'm assuming. I don't know. He probably went home because some days he probably had a little. Some days he probably had a lot. But this day he came home. I can imagine him coming home. And when they saw him, my God, what didn't happen to you? Because nobody was carrying him on a mat. Nobody was carrying. He came home walking. I ain't even got to tell you the testimony. You're looking at the testimony right now. I ain't got to tell you what God has done for me. you looking at what God has done for me. Ain't nobody God but God. Can't nobody do you like God but God. You walking in there, walking in the house. He done strengthen your knees, strengthen your ankles, strengthen your feet. When God tell you to rise, don't ask a whole lot of questions. Don't be tripping out. Don't talk yourself out of it. Don't say, well, God, how you want me to walk, God? I ain't never been taught to walk. I'm over 40 years of age. And when little kids walk, they be falling and stuff. And I saw them when they was little babies and they was walking, they falling. But now you telling me to walk. He didn't say anything about that. He didn't think about how he going to do it. When God say walk, it was time to walk. When God say rise, it's time to rise. When God... When God puts you in position, when God say it's time for you to rise, it's time for you to go to the next level, it's time for me to open this door for you. You've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been believing me. Now today is your day for you to elevate. Today is your day for you to rise. Don't talk yourself out of it. Don't think yourself out of it. Don't pray yourself out of it. Get up and rise and move and go and do what God has told you to go and do. Come on, rise. Just walk. I don't know how to walk. As you walk, he's going to show you how to walk. He's going to equip you. He's going to train you. He's going to prepare you. You just, whoa, my God. Hallelujah. Let him let a fire in you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Come on, I want you to, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, Tori. Come here. God, reignite a fire. Reignite a fire. Reignite a fire. Your fire that went out, friend. Your fire that went out, friend. Ignite a fire. Reignite a fire. Reignite a fire, God. Reignite a fire in her life. Reignite a fire in her soul. I saw you when you first came here. I saw you when you first came to the altar. I saw how you were speaking. I saw a fire was in your belly. A fire was in your belly. Let them reignite a fire in your belly. Don't allow your circumstances, don't allow your surroundings to dictate your fire. Don't let nothing put your fire out. Nothing can put your fire. Fan into flame the gift that God has put inside of you. Fan it into flame. We fan up the, we stir up the gift that God has given you. Come on and give them some praise. Hallelujah. Rise. 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 It's your time to rise. It's your season to rise. Catch a hold to what God is doing. By faith, I'm rising. By faith, I'm getting up. By faith, I'm going to the next level. By faith, God is calling me to rise. Come on, rise. Rise. Rise above your depression. Rise above your anxiety. Rise above the defeat that you've been experiencing. Rise above it. Stand up and rise. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 It's time to rise. You ain't got to be defeated. You ain't got to stay in the same place. Some of us, we've been doing it in our own strength, and God wasn't in it. You got to know when God is in it. And when God tell you to rise, when God tell you to move, he's going to equip you with everything that you need. When God is in the midst and he tell you to rise, he's going to give you everything that you need. Don't you procrastinate and sit still and be stuck and miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your time. Don't miss your opportunity to rise. When you say, I'm ready for promotion, I'm ready to take you higher, I'm ready for you to move, don't you miss that moment, you rise, don't ask a lot of questions, you just rise, God, this is my time to rise, that day was his day, 
You never know when the day is going to be your day. When I got incarcerated, I didn't know what day was going to be my day. When God did things in my life, I didn't know that that was the day that was going to be my day. Stop procrastinating. And when he say rise, it is time to rise. I believe in this house. In this house. I believe in this house, in this church. I believe that we are in a season that God is getting ready to do something amazing for all of us. But I want you to hear me. I believe he's getting ready to do something amazing for individuals. Let, let, let me, let me, let me. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, I ain't, yes. I ain't, I ain't, y'all ain't never heard that come out of my mouth. It's for uh, the house. It's for all of us. But it's also some things in your personal life that you're getting ready to rise and elevate and walk in. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. You're getting ready to rise and elevate. So, so you got to catch this by faith. And you know who you are. And you know, well, I don't know the opportunity. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But you got to know, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm ready for one. I'm, I'm ripe for the picking. I'm ready for, I'm ready for an immediate day. I'm ready for a day for him to say, to, 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 immediately get up. When he give me the opportunity, I'm ready for a call. I'm ready for the email. I'm ready for an opportunity. Get ready for the opportunity. Get, get ready for the opportunity. Get ready for the opportunity. Get ready to walk into a place that you've never walked in before. And when you walk into the place that you've never walked in before, don't be nervous. Know that you belong. When you get to the table, he gonna give you what to say. Don't get to the table and look at the people at the table that you're in and get intimidated by their faces. You gotta know that the spirit of the living God is living on the inside of you and you belong now. You better know that you belong there. You better know that you belong there. You don't get there looking all timid and get there looking all scared and get there looking all shaky. You got to get there and know that you belong there. And you remember this word, that, oh, this is my season to rise. When the promotion come your way, you take it. You take it. Yes, I'm, well, I ain't equipped. I ain't qualified. They were, God, would, God would allow them to create a position for you. And you'll walk in it without a degree. You'll just walk in it. I ain't got the degree. And you ain't got to lie about it. They'll say, this is yours. You better know it. You better know it. You better know it. So when you get the call, don't be alarmed. When you get the call, don't be sabotaged. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Don't be so giddy and so excited. To where they think that you don't belong. Don't sell yourself short. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Because sometimes when you're so giddy and so excited, then they'll lowball you. You got to know, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I belong, yes. I'm qualified, yes. I'm humble, but I'm humble, but I'm qualified. I'm humble, but I belong. I'm humble, my God. I'm humble, but, but, this, but, but I expect this. <sighs> Do you hear this? Do you hear this? Don't you lowball yourself because you don't belong, because it, it, it comes out of you. Your confidence comes out of you. Your lack of confidence comes out of you. You got to walk in the confidence that God has given you. Walk in the authority of the Holy Ghost. Sometime when it's big moments in my life, I have to remind myself that God called me, that God saved me. That God brought me out. God, I wouldn't bother nobody. God, you came and got me. I didn't find you. You came and found me. So you did this. If I had it my way, I'd live how I was living. I'd live like a dog. But I ain't got it my way, God. You came and found me. You dusted me off. You reached way down and picked me up. You brought me out of the miry clay. You cleaned me up. So you got to walk like you belong. You got to practice. You got to look in the mirror. You got to tell yourself, I belong. I belong. I belong in Jesus' name. I belong in Jesus' name. I belong in Jesus' name. Do you hear me? So when the, when the blessings come and the overflow come and God say, today is your day for me to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. And I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about healing. I'm talking about deliverance. I'm talking about breakthrough. I'm talking about husband. I'm talking about... 
when I get ready to do that in your life. Come on, God. Bring it, God. Bring it to me, God. God, I bless you, God. I can handle it. I can handle it. I'm not going to act funny. I'm not going to be arrogant. I'm going to accept it because I belong, God. It's my season to rise. It's my season to rise. Hallelujah. I've been at the gate too long. I've been at the gate too long. I've been begging at the gate too long. I've been getting crumbs at the gate too long. I'm not getting any crumbs anymore. It's my time to get an immediate blessing from God. Hallelujah. Send the breakthrough. Send the breakthrough. Send the breakthrough. Get ready for your breakthrough. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your deliverance. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Prepare yourself for it. Prepare yourself for it. Prepare yourself for it. Hallelujah. Hear hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Come on. Say, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Receive it by faith. Receive it by faith. Sometimes, sometimes we look for blessings in the money. And sometimes he'll give it to you in the money. But sometimes the biggest blessings don't come with the finances. The biggest blessings come in his presence, in his power, in his touch, in his rise, allowing you to rise up. Thank you, Lord. The biggest blessing come in a breakthrough. The biggest blessing come when you was blind, but now you can see that God, I bless you. God, I bless you. I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. That's the breakthrough. The money gonna come. God, I thank you, God, for giving me what I need, God, for allowing me to walk in purpose, for allowing me to walk in victory, for allowing me to run again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, say I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. Come on, say it. Say, I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and give him some praise. Come on and give him some praise. Come on and praise him like he already did it. Praise him like he already brought you out of it. Praise him like he already gave it to you. Praise him like you're sitting in it. Praise him like you're walking in it. Praise him like you're at the table. Hallelujah. Some of y'all gonna, some of y'all gonna be on the phone. You're gonna get it when it, it's gonna be through a phone call. And they're gonna tell you the good news, and you're gonna be wanting to say, oh, for real? But, but when you've the, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Understand. Great. 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 So I expect to be there in the morning at 9:15. You well, know what? I'll be there at 8:45. You got. And then you get off the phone and hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. You start shouting when you get off the phone. You start shouting when you get off the phone. God, I bless you, God. Ain't nobody God but you, God. Hallelujah. Rise, rise, rise. Have confidence that because he rose, you shall rise. Come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on down. If you want prayer, I want you to come down. If you want prayer, I want you to just come. If you want prayer, you just come. If you want to come and worship God, you just come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. Come with expectation. Come with expectation. You go hungry. Hallelujah. 
Yes, God. Today is my day. Today is my day. I shall rise. I shall rise. Spread to spread the arms out. I'm going to rise today. I'm going to rise. I will rise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm not going to forget this day. Today I decided that I'm going to rise. Hallelujah. If the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you, rise, woman of God. Rise, man of God. My marriage going to rise. My children going to rise. My health going to rise. My finances going to rise. My situation shall rise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I dare somebody to just praise God right where you are like you already got it. Just praise him like he already did it. Praise him like he already blessed you. Praise him like he already brought you out. Praise him like you already walking. Praise him like he already. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 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 Bless them. Bless them. Do it. Do it for your glory. Heal them for your glory. Bless the marriage for your glory. Bless the union for your glory. Do it for your glory, God. Do it for your glory, God. Hallelujah. Let's try again. Let's try again. Let's give everything we got this time. Let's give everything we got this time. Nothing outside. No outside entities. Nobody else. No other conversation. No more secrets. We gonna do it the right way. We gonna do it the right way. No secrets. No secrets. No letdowns. We gonna communicate. We gonna talk. We gonna make it. We gonna make it in Jesus' name. We gonna make it. He gotta be my foundation. He has to be your foundation. He has to be your foundation in order for you to make it. How you need to make it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for... We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God, do it, God. God, do it, Lord. God, move in Jesus' name. God, move in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Immediately, 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 breakthrough's coming. Breakthrough's coming. Hallelujah. 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 God, do it for your glory. Touch him for your glory. Let him lead for your glory. Let him lead for your glory. Teach him your ways. Teach him your ways. Teach him your ways, God. 
Teach him your ways, God. Teach him how to be the kingdom man that you're calling him to be. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God ain't forgot about you, sister. He ain't forgot about you. He ain't forgot about you. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to tell you what has to happen. You have to forgive. That's what I fear the Lord has given me for you. You have to forgive. When he died on the cross, he died for our sins. He forgave us for everything that we've done or going to do. It's about love and about forgiveness. He forgave us. So we can't walk around harboring unforgiveness in our marriages, in our relationships, with our parents, with our loved ones. We can't harbor unforgiveness in our heart. Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brothers? He said seven times. And Jesus said, no, 70 times, seven times. He wasn't meaning 490 times. He was just meaning whenever he asked for forgiveness, forgive him. Sometimes we can't even rise because there's unforgiveness in our hearts. Unmet expectations, unknown expectations, and you're not forgiven. And so there's so much weight and you cannot walk in freedom with too much weight on you because you've not let it go. You got to let it go. You hear me? This is... I believe this is from the Lord. You cannot move forward into your risen place until you forgive. Let them off the hook. Let them off the hook. Jesus let you off the hook. Who you supposed to be that you're not going to let them off the hook. You want them to feel it. He didn't make you feel it. Let it go. Let your husband off the hook. Let your wife off the hook. Let your mama, your daddy, let the molester off the hook. Forgive them. Forgive them. Let your molester off the hook. Let your abuser off the hook. Let them off the hook. Let them off the hook. You got to hold on to it and they got to feel it. Don't keep making them feel it. Let them off the hook. God let you off the hook. God let you off the hook. Who are you that you can't let them off the hook? Let them off the hook. Forgive them. Some of you feel some kind of way about God because God didn't do something that you needed him to do or that you wanted him to do. And this offense in your heart pertaining God. You got to let it go. You can't rise because you weigh down with unforgiveness. And when you let it go, you may rise sooner than you think. Let them off the hook. Let them off the hook. Healing, 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 healing. Sometimes it takes counseling. Sometimes it takes additional help. We need your help. God, we need your help. We can't do it by ourselves. We need your help. If it's worth it, fight for it. If it's worth it, you lead the charge, man of God, and fight for it. Lead the charge and fight for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give her a hug. Give, embrace her. Give her a hug. Embrace her. Give her a hug. Come on. 
Let him off the hook. I know, I know it hurt. I know it hurt. Let him off the hook. Unforgiveness is like drinking your poison and expecting the enemy to pay for it. Give him a hug. Give him a hug. Come on. Get you a hug, man. Get you a hug. Get you a hug. Hallelujah. Get you a hug. You got to let her know, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Open your mouth. Have a conversation. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah! I rise. I rise. I rise. I rise in Jesus' name. Not in your own name, but in Jesus' name. Amber, don't overthink it. Don't, well, well. Because sometimes you be harder on yourself than God is. You punish yourself. You better understand that we serve a loving and a forgiving God. It's the enemy that wants you to walk in shame and condemnation. That's not of God. Condemnation is not of God. You don't walk in shame. You repent and you move forward. You experience the love of God. If he allowed a woman who had seven devils in her to be one of the chief people that followed him, you better know that you hadn't done anything that would cause him not to allow you to follow him. Walk in the authority that God has given you. Terrible, we've been missing you. We've been missing you. I got out of jail in 96. I walked free in 97. I got that same fire that I had then. I want that fire when you came to the altar. Even if it ain't here. That same fire when you came to the altar last year. That's that fire we want to see. It ain't about innovation. It's about the fire of God on the inside of you. Because you got a story. And you can't allow light and circumstances to cause your light to dim. God didn't bring you out for you. He brought you out for others. When God allowed the man at the gate called Beautiful to rise, it had little to do with him, I believe, and more to do with others. It's for God's glory. God bring us out for his glory. God brought you out for other young people. God brought you out for other ladies. God brought you out for other people who feel like their situation is hopeless. And you have to walk in it. And love him more than you love anything else. Stay connected to the people of God that love God. Walk in that authority. Sometimes, people of God, you have to remind yourself that his power lives in you. Because when you wake up in the morning sometimes, you don't feel like I'm a Holy Ghost giant. You don't feel that. But you got to know that. You got to remind yourself who you are. When you go to the meeting, when you get the call, the email, or the text, act like you belong. I'm going to give a little advice right here. Sometimes coaches tell football players when they score a touchdown, you can celebrate, but you better act like you done been there before. So when God do what he's going to do in your life, now, praise God like David did and tell me, I'm telling you, I don't, I ain't telling you not to praise him, but it's a time and a place when he does it, act like you done been there. Act like you belong. Act like you expect it. Because you do expect it. This is your immediate season. 
Bro, do you hear me? I believe we go, it's going to be individuals that's getting ready to rise. And we're going to hear it. And we're going to hear testimonies from individuals. That's, I'm not in the same place anymore. My immediate day came. He called my number to rise up and overcome the obstacle that was holding you down. And they're going to allow you to walk in it. They're going to allow us to walk in it. So expect it. Expect it. Expect it. Expect it. I couldn't get the sermon out off me. I'm like, how do we tie this? I couldn't get it. It's rise. You got to rise. It's time to rise. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise.